As you can see, downtown Traverse City is full of activity. Business owners in downtown Traverse City benefit from the excessive foot traffic every weekend. This view overlooks the east arm of the Grand Traverse Bay. Traverse City is about a four-hour drive northwest of Detroit and a two-hour drive north of Grand Rapids. Traverse City, Michigan, aka the cherry capital of the world, is one of the top tourist destinations in the Midwest. It's located off of the Grand Traverse Bay, which is made up of the West Arm and the East Arm. Right in the middle is the Old Mission Peninsula. The water off of Lake Michigan up this way really is as blue as you see in the satellite photo. Traverse City is constantly ranked as one of the best small towns to live in the U.S., however, it's not really a small town. Traverse City is more like a small city now, as the area has seen tremendous population growth over the last few census counts. For Midwest standards anyway. 15,000 people live within the Traverse City, city limits, and that's actually a huge misleading stat on the area as the townships that surround Traverse City have experienced quite the suburban sprawl, if you will. For this video, I'm going to first show you the townships that surround Traverse City before showing you the city itself. Last but not least, I'll show you a glimpse of what makes the Traverse City area beautiful by driving along the Grand Traverse Bay and then by driving through the Old Mission Peninsula. Well, let's get to it, shall we? I do start the video on the far western border of the Traverse City city limits. If you're unfamiliar with my videos, I do speed up my videos in order to show more in a less amount of time, and you can always keep up with the real time that it takes me to drive in the lower left corner of the screen. If I go too fast for you, or if you think that I'm going too slow, you can always adjust the playback speed by selecting the gear icon if you're watching on PC, or by selecting the three dotted menu if you're watching on a mobile device. Isn't YouTube great? Also really quick, as if you enjoy this video, make sure to drop a like, comment, and subscribe as doing all of those things helps these videos out with the YouTube algorithm. Also make sure to hit that notification bell so that you can be notified every time that I upload a new video of an area near you. If you enjoy this video, you might also enjoy checking out some of the featured playlists on my channel. Videos of other places similar to Traverse City can be found in my Michigan playlist, my Great Lakes playlist, and in my Tourist Town playlist. In case you didn't notice the date in the bottom left corner of the screen, I visited Traverse City on a Sunday in late September. It's not quite yet up to peak fall colors. Fall is a popular time for tourists to visit Traverse City. Once we get towards the waterfront and downtown, you'll get to see a glimpse of the Traverse City weekend crowd. The latest numbers show that Traverse City sees 3.5 million visitors annually. Most of those tourists will visit during the summer and the fall, meaning that the population of the area greatly multiplies every weekend during that time. Some people love this area in the winter as well as there is plenty of skiing. In fact, there's a ski resort located behind the trees on the left. To the right is Elmwood Charter Township, which is a part of Leelanau County. The Traverse City city limits extend very shortly into the boundaries of Leelanau County, but it's mainly within Grand Traverse County. Elmwood Charter Township is home to 4,500 residents and is mostly made up of retirees that fell in love with the blue waters of the bay as the median age is 55. You'll find a lot of slow drivers there that will take off the younger aggressive drivers that clog the Michigan roadways. Meanwhile, Garfield Township is home to 17,000 residents and has a median age of 39. The township offers cheaper real estate than other areas closer to the water and has become a popular place to settle down in. The median household income of Garfield Township is $47,000 per year and 31% of adults 25 and older hold a bachelor's degree or higher. The median value of owner-occupied housing is $177,000 and the public schools are shared with Traverse City whose school system is ranked as an A- on Niche.com. Now we're driving along the border of Long Lake Township which has a population of 9,400 and a median age of 43. The median household income income is $71,000 per year, 35% of adults 25 and older hold a bachelor's degree, and the median value of owner-occupied housing in Long Lake Township is $210,000. Grand Traverse County as a whole has an estimated population of 92,000 residents, which is up nearly twice the population shown in the 1980 census count of 55,000 people. Not many counties in the Midwestern states have come close to this amount of growth.
This is Traverse City West Senior High School. The school has a 2.8 out of 5 rating on Google reviews. Sheesh, teenagers, that's harsh. Niche.com ranks the school as an A-, so that must mean that this is a pretty damn good high school in the grand scheme of things. This school opened in 1998 as the region continued to boom in population. The athletic teams go by the Titans, and Jake Fisher, who recently played in the NFL on the Cincinnati Bengals offensive line, went to school here. Long Lake Road connects Traverse City to Long Lake in Long Lake Township. Did you know that there are 105 lakes in the state of Michigan that have been named Long Lake? You can sort of see the west arm of the Grand Traverse Bay on this next curve. With my experience in some recent videos, small town folks have shown their true small town syndrome when I drove past their local hospital and didn't mention it. I doubt that there are too many people in Traverse City with small town syndrome, but in case there are some of you, this is the Munson Medical Center. Munson Healthcare is the top employer in Grand Traverse County as it employs 3,100 employees. After that, it's the Traverse City Area Public Schools, followed by Northwestern Michigan College, Grand Traverse Resort and Spa, and topping out the top five is the Haggerty Insurance Agency. This is a neighborhood on the western side of Traverse City. The population within the city has basically remained stagnant since 1940. The population got as high as 18,400 in 1960, but today it's home to 15,700. In case you missed me saying this earlier, that's a huge misleading stat on how many people actually live here, as once again, there are 92,000 residents in Grand Traverse County in the year 2020, and it's likely to hit 100,000 before you know it. Meanwhile, the median household income for the city is 
is $54,000 per year. Only 12% of the residents live in poverty. 45% of adults 25 and older hold a bachelor's degree. The median value of owner-occupied housing is $240,000. The violent crime rate is above average, but when you have 3.5 million visitors coming here annually, that number is going to be above average. The fact that it's only slightly above average means that this city is pretty damn safe. The property crime is well below average as well. Make sure to drop a like for that averagely amazing insight. US 31 winds its way through the city limits of Traverse City and is the main north-south route to get into the area. As there are only a few routes for through traffic in Traverse City, the town is often highly congested on weekends in the summer and fall with the amount of visitors in town. I was surprised that traffic wasn't at more of a crawl when I was here. Tourists bring in over one and a half billion dollars annually by spending their money here locally. Traverse City is the closest decently sized city to nearby Sleeping Bear Dunes, which in 2018 reportedly saw saw over one and a half million visitors. Sleeping Bear Dunes features a collection of sand dunes that can get as high as 400 feet over the crystal blue waters of Lake Michigan. If you want to see more of Sleeping Bear Dunes, stay tuned for my M22 video. Even though it appears that we're still within Traverse City with all of the big box retail stores on both sides of the highway, we're actually back in Garfield Township. Garfield Township residents and businesses, along with all the other bordering townships, all use Traverse City addresses even though they're not technically within Traverse City. Most principal cities and towns in Michigan are weird like that, more so than other states. This is the Grand Traverse Mall which opened for business in March of 1992. Despite the national trend of indoor malls taking an epic collapse, it wouldn't surprise me if this mall is still doing really well. I mean everything that I found online about this mall leads me to believe that it is doing well, and maybe I'm wrong, but Traverse City has enough visitors here annually that would stop by this mall and shop, and with there not being a lot of chain stores within a large vicinity of isolated northern Michigan, I'd be surprised if this mall wasn't doing well compared to the typical small city indoor mall.
to the left is the Cherry Capital Airport, and the entrance is up ahead once we get past the runway area. The airport actually has a nice handful selection of round trips with cities like Detroit, Atlanta, Minneapolis, Chicago, Denver, Newark, Washington, Charlotte, Dallas, New York, Philly, Orlando, Phoenix, St. Petersburg, Florida, and Punta Gorda, Florida? What's that supposed to be? Traverse City's long-lost Florida cousin? Anyway, I guess your small town airport can receive that many round trip flights if you're amongst the top travel destinations for the Great Lakes region. We're currently on the far eastern border now of the Traverse City city limits. To the right is East Bay Township and we'll talk about that later in the video. Even though we turn right here, the bottom reference is still true. Traverse City is to the left and East Bay Township is to the right. As the kids say nowadays, no cap, which means no lie. I just made some of you smarter out there. Or you could argue that I made you dumber. I'll let you decide. I'll take pride in either. Speaking of dumb, Traverse City actually has a super fun site called the Avenue E Groundwater Contamination Site, and it's exactly right here to the left. I would have never guessed until further researching for this video. Are you too dumb to know what a super fun site is? Don't worry, I'm here to educate you, and you won't ever have to admit that you didn't know what it was. A super fun site is a contaminated site that has been exposed to dumped hazardous and toxic waste. So if you drink water from said contaminations, it gets into your brain and makes you more stupid. So don't go dig a well or buy a house along any of these affected sites unless you want to be a big giant dummy. The Superfund site however in Traverse City is relatively small and doesn't really affect a large area, doesn't really affect the neighborhood of the residents that live on the right. Despite the many reasons to visit Traverse City, the Traverse City area's main attraction is the National Cherry Festival. Detroit is known for its auto heritage, while the Traverse City area is known for cherry farming. Over 500,000 tourists come into town for that event each 4th of July week. Along with many local cherry orchards, there's also an abundance of apple orchards in the area. The Traverse City area is also amongst the top five wine-producing regions in the country. You'll see some of those vineyards and orchards towards the end of this video when I drive north through the Old Mission Peninsula.
Now, I'm back within the Traverse City city limits, and I'll be staying within them for a while now. I'm currently in the far southern portion of the city limits as I zigzag my way north towards the waterfront. This street looks like it has a nice handful of shops, bars, and restaurants. As I drove through this neighborhood, I just kept thinking about how beautiful the Traverse City area really is. I mean, I hadn't even been by the water at this point. Fall is just a perfect season for this area.
Among the most notable people from here is longtime NHL player Dallas Drake and reality TV star Carter Osterhaus. Now, this is a classic part of my videos where the small town syndrome of people usually comes out. I mean, please, feel free to mention your favorite famous person in the comment section below. Seriously, I love to hear about what successful people are from your hometown, but just don't do so in a bitter way. Don't get mad at me if I don't mention your favorite baseball or hockey players from the 1950s. You're better than that, Traverse City. I know you are. I actually probably didn't even need to say that because you are better. Up ahead you get a really nice view of the west arm of the Grand Traverse Bay.
Going back to the population growth, the beauty of the Grand Traverse Bay and the surrounding area has attracted many people with money to put it briefly. The massive amount of people moving into the area has created a housing price increase that makes it really hard for unexperienced workers to try and start their career here, as most 20-year-olds can't afford to live here with the housing shortage. With one out of every five jobs or so in the region being in the tourism industry, there's not many companies up this way, even though the region has a high amount of adults with college degrees. The only negative to the Traverse City region is the job factor, and if the region could find a way to attract a few companies into the area, this place could be even better. Most of the adults with college degrees in town work at the hospital, one of the public schools, or have used their own money to become local business owners after moving here from other areas of the country. Many young people can't stay here because of the limited opportunities. Unless you're wanting to be a business owner or an employee at the hospital or you work through the public schools, there's a very limited job market here, unfortunately. As you can see, downtown Traverse City is full of activity. Business owners in downtown Traverse City benefit from the excessive foot traffic every weekend. Recently, developers have tried to build high-rise residential and retail buildings to keep up with demands. Most of the locals here, however, want to do everything that they can to keep Traverse City a charming small tourist town. That's going to be hard to do as the region keeps growing. And by the way, that's not always a bad thing, as most of the time, a growing region means a better quality of life.
Next, I drive along East Front Street and stop at Traverse City Central High School before driving along the stretch of highway that runs along the shores of the east arm of the Grand Traverse Bay. And this is Traverse City Central High School. This used to be the only high school in town before West was built. Central's athletic teams are known as the Trojans. Here we are again on the congested US 31. This is the eastern part of the Traverse City area where most of the hotels are.
now we're finally getting to the parts of the video that you really wanted to see. To the right is Traverse City State Park, mostly just used as a campground for RVs and motorhomes. Nice little pedestrian bridge over the highway to get to the beach. Let's get a better view of the bay, shall we? Meanwhile, East Bay Township is home to 11,000 residents and has a median household income of $73,000 per year. 36% of adults 25 and older hold a bachelor's degree or higher, and the median value of owner-occupied housing units is $183,000. Up ahead is another great view of the east arm of the Grand Traverse Bay. That was a nice drive. Next we head north on M37 through the Old Mission Peninsula to get more of what we just saw.
Now that we're in the peninsula, this is where a lot of the region's cherry orchards, apple orchards, and vineyards are located. You can also find more on both sides of the bay. Throughout this video, you've heard me mention the west arm and the east arm of the Grand Traverse Bay. The two arms are split in half by the Old Mission Peninsula. This view overlooks the east arm of the Grand Traverse Bay. Wow, we're an hour into this video. This YouTube video is more like a movie. Peninsula Township is full of rich mofos, by the way. The median household income here is $101,000 per year, 70% of adults 25 and older hold a bachelor's degree or higher, and it's home to just 5,800 people, and it will probably always be home to just that many. Very hard to ever see residential subdivisions getting built out this way, taking place of all the orchards and vineyards. Meanwhile, this scenic overlook looks over the west arm of the Grand Traverse Bay.
Here is a glimpse of a different angled view of some of the vineyards and orchards. Next, I turn off of the main highway and head towards Old Mission, which is where Europeans first settled in this area. While it's not much of anything today, here is the town of Old Mission. In 1836, the U.S. federal government agreed to provide local native tribes with both a mission and schools for their reservation. The Indian agent that represented the government, Henry Schoolcraft, selected this natural harbor on the eastern shore of the peninsula along the Grand Traverse Bay. After a few years, Native Americans nearly abandoned the village and then Europeans arrived. Only a few Native Americans remained in the village at that time.
As we approach the tip of the Old Mission Peninsula, I show you a few more views of the Grand Traverse Bay. At the very end of the tip of the peninsula lies the 45th parallel north, which is halfway between the equator and the North Pole. At the end, I'll show you the Mission Point Lighthouse and a log cabin that was built here from the 1850s. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to drop a like, comment, and subscribe, as doing all of those things helps these videos out with the YouTube algorithm. Also make sure that you hit that notification bell so that you can be notified every time that I upload a new video of an area near you. And if you enjoyed this video, you might enjoy checking out some of the featured playlists on my channel. You might enjoy checking out my Michigan playlist, my Great Lakes playlist, or my Tourist Towns playlist. We'll see you next time. Peace!